Thanks for joining us on National Focus. I'm Kanisha St. Louis. In the headlines, 201 units ready in Bellevue Chopin by January 2018, over $190,000 for housing, business, and health in the Collier constituency, and over $40,000 for fishermen of the South. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. When you think about it, food is life. That's why people come to Dominica. They don't only come for the waterfall or the scenery or the view, but it's the flavor. Sometimes it is just what they can taste. The flavors that we have here, you can't find anywhere in the world. They are truly unique. I've been in business 17 years, and I see so many guests come and go. My business is to put a smile on their face and something good in their belly. Everything we serve here is local. It comes from all over Dominica. So we get fresh lettuce or vegetable or fish from Santover, all our product from the farm. Sometimes go on the farm and have them pick. The uniqueness of the experience is in how authentic it is. I heard the um, taxi driver promoting my plantain chips. I said, that's the best plantain chips you can ever have. I don't have to go and put it on TV. <laughs> Money is not everything, but leaving customer with a smile, friendly service, and they will come back. This is the real Dominica. I'm just proud to be a part of it. My name is Maurice Smith. They call me Rudy. Tourism is my business. Thanks for staying with us. On Thursday, GIS toured the site of the new Petit Savannah resettlement in Bellevue Chopin, where 340 units are under construction, primarily for the people of Petit Savannah who lost their homes and their community following Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. GIS's Kimani Seja reports. Project manager of the Bellevue Chopin Housing Development, Christopher Timmings, has confirmed that 201 units will be ready to be commissioned by January 1, 2018. Actual construction work began in April this year, and Timmings is pleased that the project is so far progressing smoothly and on schedule. We spent the first four months this year really just muck shifting, clearing the ground, cutting the shape of the roads, in this area here, C, which is with C1, C2, which is the area immediately behind us there, and in area A1. So we've got the basic layout of the site now sorted out. We started foundations for the units back in April, just early ones, establish, establishing the position of the houses, making sure everything fits the way we want it to fit. We're now, we're confident in that now, with what every unit marked out, we know where it's going. The units are two, three and four bedroom detached and semi-detached buildings, which are between 600 and 1300 square feet and laid out in five zones surrounding the existing Bellevue Chopin. The addition of a commercial center, complete with shopping malls, a farmer's market and community center, will add to the life and sustainability of the new development. A soccer field is also part of the development. Quite literally in the middle of the village now, or the new village as it will be. And we have the commercial centre, which has 15 shop units. It's got 13 office units. We, it's just a shopping mall, really. Um, Two-storey building. We've got the new playing field, which it's a multi-purpose field but it's big enough to it complies with the FIFA regulations for an international soccer pitch. In Zone C1, situated below the main road, and Zone A, above the Bellevue Chopin main road, 201 units will be ready to be commissioned in January 2018. Foundation work has already been laid and complete structures without the roof are expected to be up 12 days each. Every area has a mix of units, whether it's four bedroom detached houses, four bedroom semi-detached houses, we've got three bedroom semi-detached houses, we have three bedroom linear condominiums, two bedroom linear condominiums. And the mix is across the whole site. There's no variation. So in any quarter of the site, 
you can get all types of units. The construction is, the structures are all in situ reinforced concrete. It's a quick solution, it's the best solution, and it's a proven solution that's going to last hundreds of years. The community centre and commercial centre, farmers market and playing field are also expected to be handed over on January 1, 2018. Erratic rainfall and shortage of materials have so far been a challenge, but the project manager is confident that the units will be ready in time. We've actually only had 10 dry days since we started, completely dry days. We're coping with it, the contractors are facing up to the challenges, the local contractors doing the roads are up there, they're increasing their resources, they're increasing their plant on site. They know the challenge, they know the end date is finite, it's not going to move. They need to do what they've got to do, what they've got to do to get to that date. Over 200 Dominicans are employed on the project. Local contractors are building two-lane concrete roads, the community resource centre, the commercial centre, basketball court and playing field, while a Chinese company, China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, the seventh largest construction company in the world, will construct the residential units. Montreal Management Consultant Establishment, based in Dubai, is the developer. The entire project will be ready to be handed over by June 30, 2018. We're trying to build a 21st century development in Dominica. We believe it will be the finest new development in Dominica when it's completed. Everybody, all the houses are getting fitted kitchens, everything is, we're going to put, we're putting fiber optic in, so everybody's getting maximum Wi-Fi and internet capability. It's a proper 21st century development. All the utilities are on the ground, so we're not going to see electric cables slung everywhere. We're going to hide the electric meters, so it's going to look real 21st century, clean, good, and hopefully people will be happy with it. At the new settlement in Bellevue Chopin, uh, this is Kimani Session for GIS News. Thanks, Kimani. In more news, a promise made to residents of Colliho and Dubla for small business, housing assistance, and to meet some medical costs was fulfilled on Wednesday with the presentation of two checks. Honorable Member of Parliament for the Colliho constituency, Lady Catherine Daniel, presented the first check to the Colliho Village Council. Honorable Daniel says the Dominica Labour Party government, in an effort to improve the lives of nationals, is investing in the development of a people in the areas of health, education, culture, business and housing. Today I'm delivering to the Kualiho Village Council an amount of $108,000 and that will go towards housing assistance in some cases towards a little business assistance in some cases and a little health assistance in some cases. We are approaching the hurricane season and some people, their houses are in a little state that they would like to strengthen. Some of you have had requests for a little housing assistance for a long time and I'm sure you have said that we've forgotten you that one is getting, this one is getting, but you're not getting. But remember, with God, everything happens at the time it's supposed to happen. That's how God works. And if you take life that way, you wouldn't have the stresses, you wouldn't have the worries. You put your needs, present it to your father, and then you know your father will put people in place to help you. The Honorable Kaliho Parliamentary Representative explained the process for those who will receive assistance through the Village Council. The funds will be available by the second week of July. You submitted for some of you invoices. Some of you, you're getting everything you submitted. Some of you, you're not getting all. That doesn't mean you won't get the rest. But because of the quantum that you needed, we are able to give you a substantial amount of that so that you can work with what you have, see where you reach, and then we'll assist you further. Honorable Daniel also advised recipients to keep records of the amount spent to avoid loss. When the council gives you the check for the place that you're supposed to purchase your material, there are sometimes you go, because of the length of time, you did your invoice, some things may not be available. So you will go and you will get part, 
They take the check, you take what they give you, and you go and you forget about the rest. But I want you, when you go and you get whatever you get in, to make a note of how much you have spent. So that you can know your balance. Meanwhile, the Dubla Village Council received a check of over $91,000. For the Dubla area, some towards business, some towards culture, and a little towards housing. Because as you know, Dubla is going to celebrate the Feast of St. Peter. And while I'm on that, the Feast of St. Peter, village councils by nature are supposed to represent local government interests. They're supposed to work in tandem with central government. And as a PAL rep, I think village councils should be working hand in hand with PAL rep to see that the needs of the community are met. During the short ceremony, a few recipients received the letters confirming approval. Also this news time, a check of over $40,000 has been handed over to the Dubic Stowe Fishermen Association to facilitate the purchase of an ice machine. The association includes fishermen from Grand Bay, Tetmon and Dubic and was created to assist its members with the purchase of fishing gear and equipment and to solve common problems among members. Speaking at the official handing over ceremony, Acting Chief of Fisheries Officer Rivier Sebastian stated that this donation was a result of both the hard work of the fishermen and the government's intervention. You landed in excess of 100,000 pounds of fish over the last year. So that says that with just a few boats, about 25 boats fishing two or three times, four times a week, it says that you have been doing more than what we really anticipated with just a few boats, given all the challenges that you have. One of the most important components required to keep fish clean, healthy, and wholesome is ice. You need to lower the temperature of the product because fish is a highly perishable product. So if you have ice on your fish, especially if, when you just catch the fish, if you can go out to sea, put the fish on ice, half of your problems in terms of quality is solved. That is a very important factor. So it now means that you not having an ice machine, you'd have to traverse into Roseau every day from what I see and what I know, get ice from Roseau and come to your community, put it on your boat, go out to sea. That's a lot of headache. So a lot of that headache is hopefully will be resolved. The funds were made available by the government of Dominica through its Citizenship by Investment Program and the Parliamentary Representative for the Petit Savan Constituency, Dr. Kenneth Daru. Honorable Daru, who was also acting Prime Minister, said he was pleased to assist in the facilitation of the purchase of this machine, which will significantly enhance the economic livelihood of the fishermen. It's been a, a few months, I know things. I think a few executive members of the group approached me you know, for assistance in procuring this ice machine. So that's taken a few months in coming. But I'm really happy today um, as a member of parliament and of course as a fisherman myself. While Fossil had, has been or rather had been the traditional um, landing site um, f um, for fishing in the area, um, over the years we've seen an increase in fishermen landing their, their, um, their catch at store. Um, and again, as you rightly said, I guess because of the whole topography of the area, this is a natural sheltered bay. And, and it, 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 that is one of the things that gave me the impetus really to see how we could or I could assist um, in, the, in the procurement of this ice machine. So while it's a very um, humble, modest amount of $40,000, it is quite significant, as Mr. Sebastian said, these are funds that come from the coffers of the government of Dominica, um, for this proceeds of the CBI. Either way, it is um, in tax revenue. This is, this is state money, your money, people, people's money, that, uh, that is now going to be given um, to you to, to procure this ice machine. Executive member of the Dubic Stowe Fishing Group, Kevin Cook, expressed his thanks for the donation. For the past seven years, I've been fishing here. I mean, I'm young, so I knew to the game. And then the ice machine, if we had the um, purchase another ice machine, like, it would be a lot beneficial to myself and other members, other fishermen around the south. Because to purchase ice from Tongue is, is kind of costly for us on a daily basis. I mean, certain fishermen are faced with, with the, um, the stress of it because some of us don't have our own vehicles and then we face with that. So 
this ice machine, I believe, would be very beneficial to us. The machine will serve 24 members, of which 16 are boat owners, other fishermen in the area, and the community. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. I believe in the natural order of things. I believe in the, in the harmony of things. You know, in everything we do, we have to keep it natural. I've been doing farming for now over a decade. My day is very hectic, but I make it light. You know, because I enjoy what I do. I enjoy producing the best quality goods and to make sure that the people that receive it, they receive the best that they can ever get. Right from the farm, everything that I grow, I process them back into the farm so that the same things that grow in the farm is what protects the farm. Tourism is my business. You know, it's not just dealing with the foreigners that come in, but it's preparing those things that when they come, they can feel and taste the difference in coming to this exotic island. And it starts with the farmer because we provide the things that they eat, that they taste, that they drink. I believe in my heart that it's my responsibility to provide quality. My name is Tony Alves and tourism is my business. Welcome back. 30 residents of the Woodford Hill community will soon benefit from the government's sanitation program after a check of $330,000 was presented to the Woodford Hill Village Council on a Thursday. Caretaker of the Wesley constituency, Athenia Benjamin, presented the check to the chairperson of the Woodford Hill Village Council, Wilson Honoré. Benjamin stated that this recent check dispels the notion that government is not working in certain constituencies. She explained the process of construction to recipients. The government took the opportunity to draft up um, a contract for the contractors to ensure that when they start the washrooms, the washrooms will be completed. There is also a plan made by the government, a, a standard plan of how the washrooms should look. So each washroom, although the terrain may be a little different from um, each other, um, all the washroom, the, the look of the washroom should be the same. We have agreements that the um, contractors should follow and we have a worksheet that the clerk has to pay attention to as to the schedule of how the work is progressing. Each washroom should cost about $11,000 to build and a guideline of how what is needed for each washroom is also included in the package that I will be handing over to the chairman of the Woodford Hill Village Council. Chairman of the Woodford Hill Village Council, Wilson Honoré, thanked the caretaker for her work done. On behalf of the people of Woodford Hill and the Woodford Hill Village Council, we would like to say a hearty thank you to the government of Dominica for this wondrous guest gesture and this gift to the people of this community. This, one, this thing is, is long you know, waiting because several times I walk up the road and people are asking me when other toilet is going to come. My, my answer to them, just be patient. Nothing cannot be ready before it is ready. But today, the check, the monies are ready. Everything is in here. One recipient expressed her gratitude to government. Thank you very much, Village Council. Prime Minister, I love care. Oh, you hear? And I love him very much. Meanwhile, Benjamin used the opportunity to update the public on strides taken to address some areas in need of rehabilitation. We went through a lot of the hamlets in Woodford Hill and also in Wesley to look at some of the, the interior roads that they have. We went to Joe, we went to Small Farm, we went to um, the back road at Small Farm, we went to the Pan Lake Road, we went to um, the we went mangrove and we took a look at the playing field also. So there are lots of things in the works for Woodford Hill. So we just have to be diligent and just be a little patient. 
She stated that more projects will soon be undertaken in Woodford Hill. I know a lot of persons are concerned about the Woodford Hill Larry Road with how um, the amount of holes that is there. But we already did an estimate of a million point one dollars to um, get that road repaired. So just be a little more patient and we will get it done because government will be able to um, give to Woodford Hill what is needed. And finally, this news time, the Dominica Youth Business Trust, the DYBT, in collaboration with the Junior Achievement Dominica, has awarded the winners of its second poster and essay competition. The My Business for the Future poster competition and the Shadow and Entrepreneur essay competition is held annually in observance of Global Money Week. This year, Global Money Week was recognized from March 27th to April 2nd and is a celebration initiated by the Child and Youth Finance International with local and regional events and activities aimed at inspiring children and youth to learn about money, saving, creating livelihoods, gaining employment, and becoming an entrepreneur. This is an effort to celebrate the entrepreneurial spirit of our young people. The poster competition which targeted students from the age 8 to 11 years under the theme, My Business of the Future, was geared at inspiring students to think of future viable enterprises. Shadow and Entrepreneur Essay Competition targeted young people between the age 15 to 18. This activity emphasizes the importance of the entrepreneurial spirit within the context of our society and encourages students to experience a day in the life of successful entrepreneurs. In November, during Global Entrepreneurship Week, the winners of the essay competition will be afforded the opportunity to shadow the entrepreneur who they wrote about. Eunice Solomon of the From Offending to Achieving program received the first prize in the essay competition. In addition, he received the winning plaque, compliments the National Cooperative Credit Union, a junior savings account from the Bank of Nova Scotia, a Toshiba tablet from Cashwiz, and a stationary supplies from J.E. Nassif and the National Bank of Dominica. For the poster competition, Kayla Fountain 8 of the Caleb John Primary School was awarded the first place prize. She received the winning plaque compliments Jay's Bookstore, a junior savings account from the Bank of Nova Scotia, a pair of cloud headphones and flow memorabilia from Flow, and stationary supplies from Jay Nassif and the National Bank of Dominica. Before we leave, here is one announcement. Residents of Lubia, Madril, Fobawa, and the Environs are invited to the 11th inaugural meeting of the Lubia, Madril, Fobawa Village Council on Monday, 10th July 2017 at 5 p.m. at the Lubia Resource Center. And that's the English segment of the news. Shakira Perry is up next with Creole Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel accueil, non, moi c'est Shakira P. Association Pêche Dubic Epistote a payé 40 000 dollars au gouvernement pour gagner une machine pour faire la glace. Association Lani Pêche a gagné 7 000 et puis Dubic. Aussi, Association Sala a formé pour aider les pêcheurs pour gagner équipement pour pêcher et puis pour adresser n'importe quel problème, c'est pêcher la nuit. L'argent là, c'est hot citizenship by investment program là. Mam Parliament pour constituents de Sala, Honorable Dr. Kenneth Daru, dit qu'il plaisit pour faire donation de Sala, qui y croit que bénéfice de pêche là. Mam Executive Association là, Kevin Cook, oui, mais c'est gouvernement pour donation là. À d'autres nouvelles, il y a un permet fait par les résidents, les constituents de Colio pour petit business, Kai et puis Santé, Vini en réalité, le même parlement pour constituer si ça la Honorable Lady Catherine Daniel, délivre un chèque pour plus de 100 000 dollars pour faire ce projet ça la possible. Honorable Daniel, du gouvernement qui a fait la vie meilleure par tout le monde. Le même parlement a assuré la résidence, l'argent là, qui est paré à la deuxième semaine à juillet. En même temps, le village consul du a tapé un chèque à valer 41 dollars. L'argent sala, c'est pour financer la réhabilitation de pour petit business et puis pour le développement culte en village. 
People's Republic of Venezuela celebrate this and sixth anniversary on Depardas, Mekweli Simen Sala. Your ceremony pour place à Simon Bolivar à Goodwill, la yon mette kouan pour matcher anniversaire la. Ambassador Venezuela pour Dominique, His Excellency Hayden Pirella, oui mette gouvernement pour si pour la yon ka ba Venezuela, ko Venezuela ka expérience yon mauvais temps. Ambassador la aussi di Venezuela pani protest tout yon pays la. Il dit media international ka mette situation la pli boave. Honorable Dr. Kedif Daru ka akko premier ministre. Honorable Daru, we mess Venezuela pour tout sa yo ka kotine pour fe ba Dominique an zafe kai, edikasyo, epi koute. Sa se tout pou nouvel akwe yol, nan mwen se Shaki Repair. Ova. Coming up next, how to prepare your home for the hurricane season. As we are now in the hurricane season, here are some tips on safety during a storm. Don't walk, swim, or drive through flood water. Just six inches of fast-flowing water can knock you over, and the two feet will float a car. If caught on a flooded road with rapidly rising waters, get out of the car quickly and move to higher ground. Don't walk on beaches or riverbanks, and don't allow children to play in or near flood water. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on a past National Focus newscast on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Kredisha Sedri. Thanks for watching.